And what's happening is that most are giving in to this pressure, especially this month, with their refusal to preach, with their refusal to stand, with their refusal to have a voice in this time. We've got all sorts of preachers who behind scenes and in an email will tell me, yup, I stand upon that, but you're not going to see it publicly. Out fully say, rightfully saying that. They're like, I'm, I'm never going to show that kind of stuff publicly. I'm not going to preach that. I'm not going to get involved in this kind of uh, battle, in this kind of war. I'm called to minister into this little church. But that's not going to do anything, and that is actually part of the problem. The house of God is becoming the possession of the filthy ones. Why? Because if we remain silent, they've won. If we're not going to speak up, they've won. If we're not going to voice the truth, we've won. And so many are giving in. Many are choosing to remain silent. Many of these preachers, in fact, are just opening the doors. When you have, you have people doing this Born This Way ministry, Bob Grace Sr. stands up and, and he endorses this Johnny Nixon book and says, you know, sodomites make really good children's workers and all these kinds of things. And the house of God is being turned from the house of God into a den of iniquity. And this is happening without them even knowing it. They go on day after day, week after week, month after month, and they feel like, they act like, they sing like, they preach like. They're still the same independent, fundamental, King James only Bible believing Baptist church that they've always been, but they're not realizing that they are being subverted. How are they being subverted? Opening the doors that they would be children's workers. That's the worst case. But how about this? Just not voicing against it. Not preaching against it. Not letting your voice be heard during pride month, whereby you would condemn it, whereby you would speak against it, whereby you'd lift up your voice as a trumpet, even just to say, God, destroy all that wickedness going on in that march, in that parade. God, destroy them. They hate thee, Lord. I hate them too. God, with a perfect hatred, I hate them. Would you, God, not hold your peace? Could we see you, Lord, and act your vengeance upon them? But no one's willing to do that kind of thing. No one's willing to even ask God to do it for them. We need to be thundering this kind of preaching from the pulpits in Canada. We need to be voicing the truths of the scriptures. Leviticus 23, 13 challenge was perfect. Just present it in the context. Just give me what that Bible verse actually means to me today as a Christian in Canada. But they would not do it. Why? Because they think it's going to come against them and they've actually been disarmed as a house of God. They're a den of iniquity and nothing more. Verse 13 says, oh my God, make them like the wheel as the stubble before the wind. Wouldn't this be great? Let's just pray this. Oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind. As the fire burneth the wood and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid of thy storm. 